Hello, students. Now we will continue with our class on the folding of embryo. So, in the folding of embryo, the cells which lie in the central part of the germ disk they will multiply rapidly than those which are lying at the periphery. So, this overgrown central part it results in the folding of the germ disk and forms primitive cylindrical embryo because our space is restricted and the embryo is growing very fast. So, to accommodate it, it undergoes folding. So, there are there is a cephalocaudal folding that is the overgrown tissue. The embryo shows folding in the median plane. So that is the cephalocaudal folding and also on the lateral plane. That is the sides of the disc are also fold, being folded. So that is a lateral folding. So the embryo undergoes two folding that is a cephalocaudal folding and the lateral folding. And this folding is to accommodate the growing embryo. So cephalocaudal folding can be studied as a cranial head fold and a tail fold. Okay. So amniotic cavity. So because of the folding, the amniotic cavity, it enlarges to enclose a ventral surface of the embryo. And amniotic membrane, it forms a tubular sheath around the connecting stock. So this one is the connecting stock. So because there is cephalocaudal folding, so above is the amniotic cavity. So it will cover whole of the ventral surface of the embryo as well as it will form a sheath around this connecting stock. So all the folds converge on the ventral surface of the embryo to produce R glass constriction. This is, you can see this is an R glass constriction of the yolk sac. So this was the yolk sac. So it has constricted in the middle. So a part of the yolk sac is being entrapped into the embryo. So this will stay as a uh, primitive gut. And the protruding part of the yolk sac will form the umbilical vesicle. And this part you can see, this is the connecting part of the primitive gut to this uh, umbilical vesicle. This connecting part is known as vitello-intestinal duct. So what is vitello-intestinal duct? It will temporarily connect the primitive gut to the umbilical vesicle. And part of the primitive gut cranial to the vitello-intestinal duct is known as the foregut. And caudal to it will be the hindgut. And the part opposing it is the midgut. So now how the head fold is formed. So this one is a straightened disc. The head part is being magnified over here. So overgrown germ disc folds around the cranial end of the notochord to form the head fold. So this one is the neural tube. This will also enlarge to form, uh, form the forebrain vesicle. So this disc will fold around its cranial end of the notochord. So this one is the notochord. So it will fold around the notochord. So now it will, it has folded a bit. So now this head fold is come, has, uh, lying beneath the notochord. Initially, it was this one is the buccopharyngeal membrane. It was anterior to this notochord. Now it will come to lie just beneath the notochord and it will be between the forebrain vesicle and the pericardial bulge. So foregut is now trapped part of the yolk sac which is in the head fold. So jo head fold mein primitive gut hai, wo foregut banayega. So ventral relations of the foregut are the buccopharyngeal membrane. It is the only bilaminar part. Then is the pericardial sac. This one is the pericardial sac, which was lying ahead of it. And because of the head fold, it has come uh, uh, to lie ventral to it and also caudal to the buccopharyngeal membrane and the septum transversum. So septum transversum was the connecting and uh, part of the mesoderm of the somatopleuric to the splanchnopleuric. So, so here is the septum transversum. Then are the, what are the dorsal relations of the foregut? These were the ventral. The dorsal relations are the notochord. This one is the notochord. 
and the forebrain and the midbrain vesicles. So the brain vesicles will form the dorsal relation. Now the cranial relation is the rapidly uh, growing forebrain vesicle. So this one is the cranial, this one is the dorsal, and this one is the ventral relation of the forecut. So what are some of the interesting facts uh, in this during uh, folding, cephalocaudal folding is that due to the head fold, the buccopharyngeal membrane come to lie on the ventral surface. So over here, this is the ventral surface of the embryo and it becomes cranial to the pericardial sac as well as septum transversum. And during the fourth week, buccopharyngeal membrane, it will rupture. The foregut is separated from the pericardial sac by cardiogenic plate. That is the mesenchyme that will form the heart. And the septum transversum is a mesenchymal tissue that lies caudal to the pericardial sac. This septum transversum, this green one, trans, uh, forms the fibrous pericardium, the part of the diaphragm, and a part of the ventral mesentery of the foregut. So three derivatives of the septum transversum, it is often asked. Then come to the tail fold. So overgrowing germ disc also fold ventrally around the caudal end of the notochord to form a tail fold. So tail fold produces following changes. So hindgut is being trapped over here in the tail fold. So dorsal relations. So this one is the tail fold. This one is the hindgut. So dorsal relations are the notochord as well as the neural tube. Then the caudal relations is the degenerating primitive streak. This one is the primitive streak. Then there is allantois. If you remember, there was outpouching of the yolk sac into the tail fold. That was allantois. So it communicates, this allantois, it communicates with the hindgut. So over here, you can see this one is the allantois and this one is the hindgut. So it will now communicate with the hindgut. So, and the bilaminar cloacal membrane. So this one is the cloacal membrane. It lies caudal to the connecting stalk. So this cloacal membrane, it will rupture in the seventh week of intrauterine life. So cloaca, so caudal to the uh, hindgut. So this one is the hindgut. It is caudal to it. It is a bilaminar area of the germ disc. If you remember, it is called cloacal membrane. And at the site of the cloacal membrane, ectodermal surface shows a depression called ectodermal cloaca. So the post, this one is the allantois. So post allantoic part of the hindgut dilates to form the endodermal cloaca. So, so this uh, cloaca, it is seen as a depression. So part above is above it is uh, endodermal and part beneath it will be ectodermal in origin. So post allantoic part of the hindgut dilates to form endodermal cloaca and cloacal membrane is divided into ventral urogenital membrane and dorsal anal membrane. So both urogenital and anal membrane, they rupture in the seventh week of intrauterine life. Now comes to the lateral folding. So you can see this one is the uh, a longitudinal view of a developing embryo. This is the cephalocaudal fold. Now, this is the, at this section, this one is the lateral fold. So, this is our, this is our amniotic cavity, which was flanked by the somatopleuric mesoderm. This was our yolk sac, which was flanked by the splanchnopleuric mesoderm. And now you can see there is developing intraembryonic coelom, which will, later on, it will, these two folds will fuse in the midline and it will form a continuous peritoneal cavity. Here the gut has been taken inside. So a tube within a tube model has been found by lateral folding. So overgrowing pa central part of the germ disc form two lateral folds. Formation of lateral pro uh, fo fold, it produces following changes. So one is amnioectodermal junction. It will come to lie close to this umbilical cord. So there will be a connecting stock. It will uh, come to lie near it and it will form a tubular sheath around it. Then the formation of midgut and vitello-intestinal duct. This one is the midgut and this one is the connecting part uh, of the midgut to the umbilical vesicle. So formation of 
midgut and vitello intestinal duct and umbilical vesicle it results because of the lateral folds then there is a formation of a dorsal mesentery why because the gut has been uh, taken inside the developing embryo so it is being suspended from the ventral body wall through a fold of mesenchyme which is known as dorsal mesentery of the gut the ventral part will degenerate pehle ventral mesentery bhi hoti hai lekin baad mein wo disappear ho jati hai to puri peritoneal cavity ek hi ban jati hai so it so formation of dorsal mesentery of gut is also result from lateral folding so splank splanchnopleuric intra embryonic mesodermal layer forms the dorsal mesentery because it is the it is covered by splanchnopleuric mesoderm so that was that will form the dorsal mesentery of the gut and fourth is the formation of the peritoneal cavity i have already told you the somatopleuric intra embryonic mesoderm fuse ventrally in the midline to convert intra embryonic coelom into a peritoneal cavity these are the approaching fold of the uh, ectodermally flanked amniotic cavity so it will join in the midline and it will form a peritoneal cavity inside it so now this peritoneal cavity it is lined out by the somatopleuric membrane somatopleuric mesoderm and inner side it is lined by the splanchnopleuric mesoderm now the connecting stock so, so formation of tail fold moves the attachment of connecting stock from dorsal end of germ disc to ventral aspect of the embryo and limit it at the umbilical opening so the connecting stock has also moved ventrally so structure of the connecting stock in the fifth week is the vitello intestinal duct remnants of the yolk sac extra embryonic mesodermal connective tissue that later forms the wartens jelly so connecting stock is the site of amnio ectodermal reflection and continuation of the intra embryonic and extra embryonic coelom so this coelom continuation persists up to 10th week of intra uterine life now the differentiation of the endoderm so endoderm was uh, present only along this uh, our uh, primitive yolk sac or uh, this primitive gut so the endoderm forms the endodermal lining of the foregut midgut and hindgut so except at the opposite the oropharyngeal membrane and opposite the cloacal membrane it is all lined endodermally so what are the derivatives of the primitive gut so foregut will form the lining of epithelium of pharynx esophagus stomach duodenum up to the ampulla of the waiter tongue and floor of mouth roof of mouth is ectodermal in origin if you remember then lining epithelium of respiratory system auditory tube tympanic cavity parenchyma of tonsils thyroid parathyroid thymus liver and pancreas then midgut the lining epithelium of distal part of the duodenum jejunum ileum cecum appendix ascending colon and right to thirds of the transverse colon behind uh, be, uh, distal to it will all be the hindgut so lining epithelium of left one third of the transverse colon descending colon sigmoid colon rectum anal canal up to the mucocutaneous junction and the lining epithelium of the urinary bladder urethra vagina parenchyma of prostate bulbo urethral so all these are the are endodermally lined structures so what are the week wise changes in the embryonic period so at the beginning of the fourth week the embryonic disc is almost flat and has 4 to 12 somites so what changes starts appearing uh, from fourth week onwards there is increase in the somite numbers there are formation of the three brain vesicles formation of head fold and tail fold at 21st day the heart starts beating 24th day the first pharyngeal arch appears then at 26th day three pairs of pharyngeal arches appear then 26th to 27th day rudimentary forelimb bud appear and at 28th day hind limb bud also appear then formation of prominences of forebrain vesicle the otic pits lens placodes these are the ectodermal thickening they all appear by fourth week 
and the bug and the oropharyngeal membrane it also ruptures then during the fifth week there is rapid growth of facial and the head prominences rapid growth of second pharyngeal arch growth of the lymph buds formation of the alar and the basal laminae of the neural tube and the appearance of the olfactory placodes so olfactory placodes appear later than the otic vesicles and the optic vesicle along with the maxillary and the frontonasal process then during the sixth week it shows spontaneous movements growth of the brain vesicles appearance of nasal processes buccopharyngeal uh, uh, this is wrongly written over here the development of the appendix cecum and the spleen differentiation of limb digits begin and umbilical herniation is common that is the physiological herniation then during the 7th and the 8th week rupture of the cloacal membrane appears development of the face external ear and eye well defined limbs and digits development of metanephric kidney development of testis and ovaries differentiation of the external genitalia so uh, the sex determination can be done at around 8th week of intrauterine life so during eight week coordinated limb movements also occur primary ossification centers start appear appearing during 6th to 7th week of intrauterine life and caudal tail like eminence disappears so this was all about the folding of the embryo now next class will be on the placenta